Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to build a NAS using Open Media Vault on a ROC64 single board computer. And to explain what all that means, NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. It's where you take one or more drives, you connect them to a device on the network, the NAS, and then all the other computers on the network can use that to store files, share files, stream media, that type of thing. It's very useful to have a NAS on a network. Now, Open Media Vault is a free software application you can use to create a NAS, and you can use it on all kinds of different platforms. You can install it on all kinds of different computers to build your NAS, but the ROC64 single board computer is a particularly good single board computer to use for two reasons. Firstly, the ROC64 has got gigabit Ethernet. It's got a fast wired connection to the network. And secondly, the ROC64 has got a USB 3 port. So compared to many other single board computers, you can connect faster drives to a ROC64 than you can, say, to a Raspberry Pi. So that's what we're doing. That's what it all means. Let's now go and build our NAS. So, to build our NAS, I'm going to be connecting this ROC64 single board computer to this Intel SSD. This is very much a test build, so I've just found some components I've got lying around. This is an old Intel 40 gigabyte SSD, but it's nice and fast. And that's the real reason I want to use an SSD in this build, because I want to really be able to test out how fast the NAS you can build using a ROC64. And to connect these two things together, I'm going to be using one of these. This is a USB 3 to SATA adapter, sadly with a long lead on it. I couldn't find one with a short lead, which is not ideal, but for a test, it'll be absolutely fine. That'll connect to the drive there, and the other end, of course, will connect to the ROC64's USB 3 port, and that'll hopefully work very well indeed. But you could use any USB drive connected in here, ideally USB 3 if you want it to be fast. This could be, therefore, a two and a half inch hard drive. I personally be a bit nervous powering one of those directly from a single board computer, but I know some people do chance it and it works. If it was a three and a half inch drive, I'd certainly, well, you'll have to have an external power supply. Ideally, I'd have an external power supply on a two and a half inch drive as well. Or indeed, you could store the data on your NAS on a, maybe a USB 3 pen drive connecting in here. It depends what kind of NAS you want to build, how, how fast it has to be. Now, you're also gonna need another drive here. This under here, we're gonna be using a micro SD card because to build a NAS using Open Media Vault, you have to have two drives available, one on which Open Media Vault itself is installed and will boot from, and one or more other drives on which you actually store the data. So here, we're gonna be booting from micro SD. We could though, if you wanted to, because this is a ROC64, it's also got down here a eMMC slot, so you could actually boot the ROC64 from the eMMC card to build a NAS, that'd be a bit more robust. But for the day, I'm just gonna be using the micro SD card. And indeed, on a ROC64, I guess you could boot from a micro SD card and store your data on the NAS on an eMMC module. There's all, all sorts of options potentially available. Now, in addition to these parts, not a lot else is required. You'll need, obviously, a power supply. Here's a power supply for the ROC64. We do need to connect into the network. We'll be connecting in by uh, Ethernet to make good use of this uh, one gigabit Ethernet socket here. And other than that, the only thing we'll need to use, if briefly, is an HDMI lead. This thing will be running headlessly. We won't need to connect a keyboard or a mouse. Everything will be accessed over a web browser. But when we initially connect this thing together, we will need to connect in HDMI just so we can see the screen briefly, as you'll see in a second. Anyway, what I'm now going to do is connect this together a bit more neatly, so it'll be a lot more robust for our testing purposes. Right. Having looked at the ROC64 and related hardware, we'll now turn to software. And so here I am on the Open Media Vault website. And one of the first things I'd say here is if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you will see there is a support section. If you click on documentation, you'll see there's a, some very good documentation available. You can do all kinds of things with Open Media Vault. It's a pretty powerful system. I'll show you the basics here, but it's good to know if you've got problems, you've got the backup of this support. Now, you can't download Open Media Vault from this page if you want to install it in something like a PC. You can see we've got a, a download link there. But because I want a version for the ROC64, I'm going to go to the ROC64 main page on the Pine64 wiki and go down to Software Images. And if we scroll down here, you will discover there are versions for the ROC64, Open Media Vault to install in either eMMC card or microSD card. I'll click on the microSD version, that's what I'm going to use. 
And if we go here, we can download the latest build from there. That person's kindly made it available. And if we flick down here, you'll see there's a, a couple of versions possible we could install. It advises us further down that uh, the best version to use is the ARM HF version. So we'll go back up here, where is it? ARM HF version is uh, there, isn't it? So we'll download that and stick it in that folder. And there we are, it's downloaded. We now need to write this file to our micro SD card. To do that, I'm going to use Etcher, everybody's favorite new uh, piece of software, or not quite so new now for writing files to our SD cards, fantastic uh, piece of software. I don't need to download that because it's already on this machine, so I'll just run up Etcher. There we are. And uh, the great thing about this is we don't have to uh, decompress the file we just downloaded. Etcher will take an image file, an ISO file, a zip file, all kinds of files. So we can just select what we've just downloaded there, which is absolutely fine. We should just accept that. Uh, we'll check it on the right device. I think it is. The SD card is inserted into a Lexar reader, so that looks OK. And all I've got to do now is to press Flash. Microsoft decides we want to check that's OK. OK it is and Etcher will get on with its business. And there we are. Etcher has now very helpfully decompressed our file, written it to the SD card, verified the write, so we can now safely eject it and insert it into our ROC64. Right, we're now booting the ROC64 into Open Media Vault. You're looking at the output of its HDMI connector, fairly obviously. We only have to have a monitor connected just so we can get a critical piece of information from the device when we're booting it up and want to go into its settings. And as you can now see, it stopped booting up and it's showing us here its IP address in the form, as you can see, 192, it should start like that, probably will then be 168, dot number, dot number, here, dot one, and dot eight. So 192.168.18 is the private or local IP address of the ROC64 when it's now connected to my network. Now I should say, because that is a local or private IP address, it might change at different times if you reconnect this to a network or other computers are connected or disconnected. These local addresses are allocated as they're needed. But in practical purposes, you can always just plug in your ROC64 to a screen to find out its address at any particular point in time and use that to get into its settings panel. And talking of that, here we are on a web browser back on a Windows 10 machine. I've typed HTTP colon forward slash forward slash and that IP address 192.168.118. Obviously you'll type the address of your own machine into the web browser. And when I press enter, it will take us through to the uh, Access Open Media Vault. You can see there it's got it up there. Now the username we want is admin and the password as a default is Open Media Vault. And if I've typed that correctly, it looks like I have, we'll get into the system. So here we are in the control screen in the web browser for our, our new NAS. Isn't it exciting? Now, first of all, I think in general settings, we should probably change our web administrator password because Open Media Vault's not very safe. I'll put another one in, which is not very long, but at least it's better. And uh, there we are, that's fine, we'll save that. So we've now got uh, our password changed. And the next thing we want to do is to look at our disks to set up some storage. So first of all, just look at the physical disks. And you'll see here there are two physical disks on this system. One is our micro SD card we booted from. We'll have to obviously leave that alone. That's to boot the system from. And the other is the uh, SSD. It's connected to the uh, ROC64. That's where we're going to store our files, which we share on the network. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe that drive. This drive has been used elsewhere. It's been used for various tests and things. I don't know what state the drive will be in. You might be using with a device like this. It's, if you're at all, I'm sure it's a good idea to wipe a drive and set it up with a system that's going to actually access it here, Open Media Vault. So I'll wipe the drive. And do I really want to do it? Yes. I'll do a quick. And there we are, option, that's all done. That's cool. And um, I'll now go to File systems and press create and we can select a device which will be our uh, device there we can see it's the right capacity we'll give it a label we'll call it um what should we call it ssd nas there we are that, that'll do and uh, okay do we really want to format it yes we do and there we are that seems to have completed and as we can see down here we've now got our uh, 
file system on that drive or SSD NAS as we just created. We need to mount this. We'll click on mount. And you can now see it's a mounted drive. Oh, we must often in Open Media Vault it'll ask you to confirm you're actually going to put your changes in to apply them. So we'll apply those changes. Yes, we want to do it. And there we are, as I was saying, we've got our uh, device which is now mounted. We can see it's got a file system. That's all ready to actually use. So we can now go and actually do something with it. So we'll go down here and we'll go to Access Rights Management and we'll go to Shared Folders. I'll click on Add and we're going to uh, give it a name. What should we call it? We'll call it uh, Block NAS. This is what we'll see across the rest of the network. We'll select a device which can be our uh, SSD NAS as we've had previously. That's fine. Uh, it'll give it a path of a network. That's OK. And we can click on Save. We now want to be able to share that device with other people on, on the network, with users on, on the network. Now there's all kinds of ways you can share that, that device. You can see there's lots of different services we can use. I'm not going to go through all of these. I'm going to use SMBCIFS, which stands for Server Message Block Protocol and Common Internet File System. It's effectively the way we can do, share files with, with Windows computers, which is what you're most likely to want to do. You've got a rather reassuring little Windows logo up the top there. So what we're going to do is to enable SMBCIFS and press save. And I'm sure in a second it'll ask us to confirm changes. Yes, there it does. We'll apply those and apply. And we'll now go into shares and to uh, add a share. And we're going to select uh, the shared folder, which is obviously the one we've just created. And we'll save on that. That's pretty straightforward. But once again, we'll have to uh, apply our changes. Do we want to? Yes. And then the final thing we need to do is to create a user who can actually access this shared folder across the network. So we'll go to users and uh, Sure, you can guess we'll go to add and add a user. We'll give them a name nice and simple, we'll make it me. We don't need a comment, don't need an email, have to have a password, of course, and we'll make this um, something nice and simple. There we are. And uh, can you guess what I put in? Of course, if you're on a network, you want to be much more secure, you want a better password, but that, that'll do for now, though. And uh, we'll save that. And again, apply our changes. Do we want to apply them? Yes, we do. And then the final thing is we go to the user, we highlight them, highlighted there in yellow. We can go to privileges and we can give this user read write access to the, uh, the rock nut by just clicking that box there. And again, save that. And uh, that should be it. We're now all set up. We've effectively, oh no, we aren't. Of course, we've got to apply the changes. How can we forget that? There we are. We'll apply those. And so what I've basically done here, networking can appear confusing. I remember in uh, my early days of computing, someone once described networking as the last black art of computing to me. And you can see why when you go through a, a process like this. But basically here, I've gone in and set up our drive, set up a shared folder, activated a sharing service, and created a user, and given the user privileges to access that folder. Now, of course, we could here create lots more different shared folders, add more users, give them different privileges to those. But we've got enough set up here now to actually operate our NAS and to test it out. So here I am back again on a Windows 10 PC and I'm going to access the NAS over the network. So I'll click on my PC and we'll go to computer and we can map a network drive. And if we click on that, I'll first of all show you when it won't work because it's worth, worth seeing that. So if I go to Browse, if your network here shows nothing, and if you click on Network, it shows you this message, Network Discovery is turned off, as it may well be on your computer if you've not showed a files over a network before, you need to fix that first or set that first. So what you need to do is to go into uh, Settings here, go into the uh, Control Panel there, and uh, they call it Settings. I don't know Windows 10. Go into uh, Network and Internet, and I have to scroll because I've got my fonts nice and big so you can see what's going on. And I go to Sharing Options and I turn on Network Discovery and Save. And once we've done that, we can now go back to uh, browsing to uh, look at the network. And you'll see now it can find lots of things. One of which is the Rock 64. So if I click on Rock 64 
and it'll now ask me to log in. Now, I've actually been doing some tests with this and setting things up and taking them away again, so it recognizes my username there. If I went to more choices, I could go down and log in as a different account. This is more like what you will see when you first go to it. It won't know your username and password. Here it obviously knows what my username is. I'll put CJB in that way just to annoy it, and I'll put in the password I set up. There we are. And I'll click on Remember My Credentials so this will happen automatically in the future. And uh, there we are. And uh, we can now click on Rock, NAS there, and uh, OK. And you'll see this will be mapping this to our drive Z. We could trade it to another drive, but drive Z, you tend to start network drives at the opposite end of the alphabet. And we can click on Finish. And there we are. We've now got that drive mapped. We've now got a Z drive available in Windows, which is the ROC NAS shared folder we set up on the NAS. That's, that's really handy, isn't it? And there we are, we open it up, it's obviously empty. Now, I thought it might be worth doing a speed test, because many of you want to know the speed of a ROC64 on a network using its gigabit Ethernet and a USB 3. So I've got down here a docs file, and in here I've got, a, as you can see, two gigabytes of files for speed test. This is exactly two gigabytes of files in fellow large files and video files. So I'm going to uh, take a copy of that and we'll drop it onto a network drive and see how rapidly that happens. So uh, I'll press paste. And there we are, that's showing a pretty good speed, isn't it? It started at about 100 megabytes a second, it's dropped down to about 30, but that's still not too bad. I'm quite impressed with this, two gigabytes of data is moving around at a pretty good speed. I mean, it does come back to having the USB 3 connection on, on the ROC64, we're going over gigabit Ethernet. Both the ROC and this PC are connected via a, a wired connection. If you're over Wi-Fi, you won't get this sort of speed anyway. But um, I'm, I'm impressed with this. We're up to uh, over 30 seconds now, but it'll be less than a minute, won't it, by, by quite a distance, I think. And uh, all the tension's killing me. We can see 92, 93. I normally do this in, in speed it up, don't I? But for once, I thought we'd do one in uh, real time. And that's... Uh, under 50 seconds to transfer two gigabytes of files over the network to the NAS. And if we open them up, they're now on the NAS, and we could, uh, what should we do? Let's just play, I don't know what. Can't remember what these files are. They were files that added up to the right size. Oh, this, that's, that's a really boring file showing us some um, things about asteroids from my asteroid video. But you can see we're streaming that media over the network now, and it's working perfectly well indeed. So I'm, I'm pleased with this. I think I've got, got bored of that. Now we'll uh, close that down. So there we are. I've showed you the basis of how to set up a NAS using a ROC64 and to access it on a Windows PC. Sometimes here on YouTube, people ask me in the comments, what is the point of a single board computer? And hopefully in this video I proved what one of the potential points of a single board computer is. You can use something like a ROC64 and OpenMediaVault to create yourself a NAS. And that's a rather useful, another rather exciting thing to do. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you see here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.